Welcome to the Fitness and Lifestyle Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Kennedy, and I'm here to help you become the very best version of yourself. What's up, legends? Welcome back to this week's episode of the Fitness and Lifestyle Podcast. Uh, very fortunate today to be joined by Matt Pilios. Um, for those of you who don't know who he is, which you probably all do because he's a bit of a legend around here, he's a director, auctioneer, and sales exec at Marshall White. He was also recognised in the top eight Victorian Agent REB Awards, which is uh, which is a very significant achievement, um, and I'm just very grateful to have you here, mate. So welcome to the show. Mate, awesome to be here. You're the Joe Rogan of, uh, of Melbourne, mate. So Just got hair. I've just got hair. That's about the only difference, got I think. Yeah, not leaner than him. <laughs> yeah. and a couple hundred million less downloads yeah. as well, but we're, we're on our way. He's, yeah. he's, got, he's got 30 years on you though, mate. So Yeah, he does. Thanks for having me. It's nice to be up near Chapel Street as well. And I know, it's good, isn't it? I out here about 20 years ago. I was, did you? Yeah, yeah great, he great part of the world. Torn it up a bit. Pre, uh, pre my lovely <laughs> wife, mate, there was some good times, yeah, that's for sure. There was some uh, nightclubs called uh, Chasers and Cuba. I'm not sure with you, familiar with that, but um, they were great times. Good Pretty times. Area. Yeah, I, I bet. Mate, um, when I was sitting down to kind of map out what I wanted to, to touch on today, there was a bunch of different things, and, and we've actually got a few mutual friends, so I was chatting to a few of those boys as well around how uh, what angle I wanted to go with today. But you, you're a man of many talents, so... Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. But, mate, I've always wanted to do this, and it may not be a house, and this is pretty cringe, but sell me this pen. This gold, gold pen. Not many pens have gold on right. there, so I don't think they'll ever make them again. Okay. The fact that uh, you've got this is such a bonus and capital growth here. Whatever it's worth now, it's going to probably be worth more than likely, not 100%, but do your due diligence. More than likely, this will be worth 10 times as much in the next five years. And it would be really bad if you didn't buy this pen. Because just in case, the good thing is worst case scenario would be worth the same. Best case scenario, it's worth 10 times as much. I would love to buy it. If you don't want to get it, I've got probably five people that take it right now. <laughs> That's unbelievable. <laughs> I'll take it, actually. <laughs> That's awesome. Don't make you want to buy the pen. <laughs> oh, actually, I'm going to take this with me, yeah. <laughs> Kane, how much is it, mate? I'm going to take it with me. Mate, um, what I wanted to, to go over first, I think obviously in sales in general, um, and I'm assuming real estate, I want to I want to definitely dive into a bit of the real estate stuff specifically today as well. But um, sales in general, um, being someone like yourself that obviously communicates a lot with whether it's a potential buyer or even just um, just in general, I know you do a lot of presenting and you used to do a lot with the with Fox Sport as well. Yeah. How significant is, I guess, learning the art or the skill of, of communication, effective communication? It's, it's imperative, to be honest, because you know, people rely on communication, especially when you're in sales. There's so many competitors. So you've really just – you've got to be there 24-7 for them. And, and everyone likes to communicate differently. So that you know, most a lot of people that are still probably my vintage and older, your parents' vintage, want face-to-face mm-hmm. or a phone call. Um, there's a lot of people who love email. There's a lot of people that love SMS. You know, I'll get clients to say, they'll just text me all day, mm-hmm. won't, won't, um, won't call me. Um, and then there's, you know, there's, people need to know that you're present and you're active. So a combination of social media, mm-hmm. um, sales, successful sales, seeing your name on boards. It's a, it's a funny game, but it's, uh, it's great. It's great. And... For yourself, let's say you're, you're showing someone through a property or, or you'd, in any form of, I guess, I don't know if negotiation is the right word, but in any form of, of sale, what are some of the key things that you kind of keep in mind when, yeah. when communicating with that potential buyer um, or, or any form of, like, I guess, negotiation, like things that you're really trying to focus on, whether it's body language, whether it's mirroring things they say, whether it's touching on their pain points, like what are some of the things that you really zero in on? The, the main things are is it really depends so with houses you've got to be careful if if i've got somebody one-on-one at a house Mm -hmm. you can be a lot more intimate and ask questions so it's been being really warm and saying come through here here you go here's the house um, and provide a good service and please let me know if you've got any questions here's a brochure here's an information sheet so that's already part of the service because you've got some some good collateral to give them they feel like wow how good is this Mm. um so then you then you're, you're there but you don't want to be too pushy and sometimes my issue is um, sometimes being too salesy, but then there's other times where you'll be at an open for inspection and I'll have five or six different people there 
and you'll let them in, you'll present the property really well, but I won't say to them, oh, what do you think? Because the worst thing they can say is, oh, we don't like it actually, it's too small, didn't like the bathroom and the other people hear it. So it's like, fantastic to okay. see you, I know you like it, Yeah. Uh, I'll give you a call and uh, we'll touch base with it. And all of a sudden it's really human nature, people's, the fear of missing out, the other people go, oh, goodness, you know, they like it, mm. we should like it. So it's about reading the play and yep. reading the situation. Outside of real estate in general, is is selling or I, again I don't know if persuasion's the, the the best way to put it. But how much time and and um, effort did you put into educating yourself around the topic, or was it something that you kind of learnt on the fly? Look, with sales, you've got an advantage than if you. So I love people yep. in per, um, in in general. I love people being engaged with people, and and naturally that means you like selling. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the good people, a lot of the good sales people, I should say, generally like people like selling, and and generally like the fact that they're um, spending time and and making money with with people. So the the biggest thing is is learning the product. So you can get to a certain part in real estate, but you've really got to know your values, your house. People got to res- to be able to buy for you and sell with you is respect that you you got your product knowledge is really good. Mm-hmm. Combination of your presentation is good, your plan, your team, yep. and being really present and active. So I commit now a lot of my life to being when I'm working really on twenty four seven. It's very hard. Yeah, it's mentally taxing, but. Things I do is as in are you, are you talking about as in like super present with whatever you're doing. So if you're if you're you're working, it's hundred percent work. If you're with the family, it's hundred percent family. Is that what you're yes. touching on? Yeah, yeah. So what I like with real estate is really it's a it's a six to six and a half day gig a week. Mm-hmm. So I really make sure that three weeks in summer and and three weeks in winter, which I've just got back from Bali, I have a really nice break. Yep. So I can refresh, recharge, mm-hmm. and mentally get better. But what I do is, and when I'm on, I'm on. You know, yeah. so if people ring me at, at six a.m. They'll get a call back, or, or whenever I wake up. And if people contact me at nine, nine thirty, they'll get a text back or call back. And not many. But most people, if they get me on a Sunday, will, will probably get me on a Sunday as well in mm-hmm. terms of calls. Um, and, and mate, I'm working all day every day. How do you find that in terms of? I don't know, even know if there's a, a potential to even have any real balance there. But like, how do you find that in being able to actually switch off and, and still have your time to yourself? And, and like you said, with the family or set, almost setting boundaries to an extent? It's hard. It's it's communication with the family. So I really communicate with my wife and two kids who have become young adults. Now son's 13 and daughter's nearly 12. Mm-hmm. That dad works so much for us to have a better life. So... They understand why, why, why I'm away a lot. Um, two is to say that we've got you know, a couple of family holidays a year mm-hmm. um, and there's always that time together. And Sunday is family day. So I'll take a few calls on the Sunday. Yeah. Um, but Sunday is phone away family mm-hmm. day. And I'll always try to do a dinner a, a week at home. So again, no mobile phone there and really at 90 minutes. And even things like... Uh, taking him to school so mm-hmm. twice a week i'll at least jump him in the car yep drop him off to school have that 10 15 minutes with him um today you know i had a meeting i went and watched my son play at brighton grammar footy for yep. a bit and I, I didn't i had three or four phone calls came through as soon as i jumped in the car on the way back to this podcast okay. I, I, I rang him back so it's extremely hard yeah and it's something that i won't be doing forever at this intensity yeah but it's like you know if it's a sportsman in footy while you're in the peak of your career um, you play and train as hard as possible. Yeah, you've got seasons. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. What kind of drew you into real estate? I guess we'll take a step back from that. Um, even so, as a as a young bloke, but before you got in into the industry, like, yep. what were you kind of like? Like, what were your interests? What what did you kind of see yourself doing later on in life? And and how did you, that journey kind of come about? Yeah, it's uh, it's something that I'd never planned to do because my dad was a real estate agent, and I saw the saw how unflexible the hours were with him. And, and back then, so, mate, I tried everything in my, in my 30s. And I say to people, try as much as you can in your 20s. Mm-hmm. Be, and, and even if you make mistakes, the, the learning experience that I've got now, which have made me better in real estate and in networking has been good. So I was doing things like had a Vodafone business, worked at, um, owned a bar, yep. just had so many different jobs across across the journey when I was young. You know, I was doing promoting at nightclubs and um, selling um um, I remember working at CUB as a rep. I just did different jobs across the board, and 
nothing really. What did I want to do? I just wanted to make money and be an entrepreneur and, and, and you know, you wanted to be cool. But to get into real estate was, I, I really needed to make some good money. And I saw all these guys making great money and I've just said to my wife, it's not what I want to do, but I think I need to do it to, to get some income. And the mm-hmm. good thing with real estate is it's, it is really hard, but it is, it is unlimited real, um, income if you do really well. So you, you can make, sometimes make a hundred grand a year, or you can make yeah. a million a year. Mm. And that's that. That's the challenge. So it's it's a uh, it's a real good income for some financial freedom. Yeah, and I guess we will, we will touch on this a little later in the chat. But I guess when you think of it like that, there seems to be a lot of similarities between the mindset of taking care of yourself physically and the work you put in. That's the results you get depending on how hard you're willing to work. And then in yep. real estate, by the sounds of it, it's like the you get rewarded for the more work you put in, the harder the, the more effort you put in. You're the one that gets the reward. Yes, it's, it's definitely true. The, the more focus you have, um, the sacrifices are big. Mm. So a lot of times you know, on a Friday night, I'm in bed early, six, seven o'clock, I'm on the couch. A lot of my mates have a joke and they say, you know, we can't, can't invite you for a beer on a Friday night or become over your half asleep. But Saturday is, is game day in real yeah. estate. So I'm really, really focused about having as much energy as possible. And I know, you know, with, um, with fitness, um, you've got to preserve your energy to have to peak the next day. Um, so you know it is like it's eating well, mm-hmm. um, juices. It's med- I meditate now every day. Awesome. Started this year meditating full time. And what uh, what style of meditation are you doing? It's just a guided uh, type meditation at the moment. Yeah, I had Steve Griffiths, the leadership coach, um, mentor me and gave me a mantra. Cool. And it was awesome. So I do twenty minutes most mornings. Yeah. I probably don't do Sundays because I'm not working. Yeah. I feel like Sunday is a bit of a meditation, but. Then I try to do an afternoon. If I know I'm doing a bit busy, I'll sneak into one of the side mm. offices at Marshall White. I reckon the young girls uh, look in the office and go, "What a weirdo!" Okay, yeah. I'm 43 <laughs> now. I used to be young, and I'm there meditating for 15 minutes. But it's really changed the uh, the calmness and the decision making and yeah. the re- reaction in such a stressful environment. Yeah, I found. I mean, I've talked about it a lot on the show, but I found it an absolute game changer. And it is similar to yourself. Like I, I never really saw myself being someone who could sit there and meditate. And I remember the first few times I tried it, I'd be sitting there going, "Fucking," because you're thinking always, about all the other shit I'm doing, or I don't have time to sit down. I, I barely sit down at yeah. all, let alone sit down for twenty minutes it's doing crazy. absolutely nothing. But has been a big game changer. Have you have you done much of the um, of the Wim Hof breath work or any any type of breath work stuff before? Yeah, I have. I went to Tony Robbins three four years ago. Oh, beauty. And he did a lot of the breathing on yeah. priming. Yeah. And before powerful got, stuff. It's really powerful. So, and, which is very similar to Wim Hof. And when I have auctions, yep. I will sit in the car. So that we have a half an hour open for inspection and the big auctions. Mm-hmm. So, so I've got a 2.30 auction. My team will open the house at 2 o'clock. Yeah. The last open. I'll say to my team, I'll be there five minutes before the auction. I'll sit in my car down the road. I'll watch people go in. <laughs> it's crazy because people will pass and go, well, what's this guy doing? Um, but so I really try to park around the corner so no one sees me. <laughs> so call, yeah, call, do, call an ambulance on yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I'll do the breathing. <laughs> and because, mate, you come out and you're, you're screaming and you've got to be focused for 20, 30 minutes and it's physically taxing mm. as well as mentally. But, um, yeah, mate, I, I believe in all that. I did a, a round of the, the breath work before we came in today, actually. Did you? Yeah, I just find That's good. whenever I'm feeling maybe a little tired or, or not so much overwhelmed or stressed, but when you kind of got a lot on your mind or, or even yep. physically you're just starting to feel a bit drained, I find it just so effective. Yeah, 100%. It's great. On the topic of, of real estate, um, for someone, and obviously you don't have to give specific advice, but for someone that's listening at the moment that um, has never bought a property before, Yep. in this, I guess, current uh, economy and however you want to put it, like – What's the best way to go about it? What would that kind of that journey be like for a first home buyer, in your opinion? Like, what would be the the you know the, the due diligence you need to do yep. to figure out what area or and, and yep. all that type of stuff? Like for someone who has absolutely no idea. Yeah, it's a good question, and there's a lot of people going to have different opinions for answers. But mine would be to say to to someone find find someone who's bought property. I mean, most people should know somebody that has purchased a property before, mm-hmm. and go and ask them and just say, look, I just need to pick your brain. Yep. Can I take you out for a coffee? I'm going to buy a house. What do you think? Um, my second um, advice would be is to read and do some due diligence. Mm-hmm. So you know, read how the economy is going. Read um, realestate.com, domain.com. Go to their websites. Become a member mm-hmm. and self-educate yourself. And, and thirdly is connect with your local real estate agents. And go by gut. You know, there's good and bad in every industry. There's great trainers and there's average trainers. You know, mm-hmm. there's not, nothing worse than I go past the gym and I, I see uh, – some guys 
150 kilos and skin's not looking great and he's training someone I think to myself and that's just human nature I yeah. would be wrong and over judgmental yeah. but it's the same thing you get good and bad in, in real estate so go by your gut and go and ask him and say look I'm looking at buying what's your advice and you'll find some really good people in real estate yeah. who'll give you advice so really self-educating and this you know with with Facebook and Instagram and so, so much awareness on there mm-hmm. it's a really good opportunity for people it's much easier for people now to go out and buy yeah, yeah ring your property professional yeah. ring your family friend Someone's always going to have somebody. Uh, if someone's young in their twenties, you know, has your brother bought? Has your parents bought? Do you reckon I could pick their brain? Yep. So, okay. Uh, yeah. Asking the questions. Where do you see the uh, the market going over the next kind of twelve to twenty four months with with how crazy things are at the it's, moment? Uh, it's a big biggest question I've had in the last three months. We've had so much capital growth in the last two years. I think this Melbourne market through a COVID pandemic went up 30 percent. There's already been a five to ten percent adjustment in, in real estate already really fast. It happened about March this year, mm-hmm. and I reckon the real and by estate, that what do you, what does that mean? Um, that means that market has gone down, values have gone down okay. across the board. Yeah, and it really depends down on the property. So what we've found is dropped most is, is probably been apartments and townhouses, mm-hmm. and what we've found is dropped a little bit less has been really good homes that are you know on six hundred a thousand square meter blocks in pretty good suburbs. They've dropped a bit, but not as much. Um, what has dropped a lot is land. So blocks of land are dirty right. because building costs have gone up 30 40%. Right. So two years ago, people would be buying land going, I can get a builder, build this for one and a half, you could build it in 12 months and make some money or live in it. But mm-hmm. now people are like, hang on a sec, that's going to cost me too much to build. The stories I'm hearing, I might even, my builder might go broke. Yeah. Or, you know, our, our building costs might start going up. It's not capped. So Even supplies stress. and stuff now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's people hearing stories about people, couples building and getting divorced and stress and supplies. Mm. So um, we're finding turnkey houses, which means finished homes, yep. are doing really well. Okay. Interesting. What um, This is something that I've, I've just heard. I, I consume a fair bit of content, not so much specifically <laughs> around real estate, but you know, guys like, I don't know if you're a big fan, but guys like Grant Cardone um, and, and people like that. And I hear mixed opinions on, and I don't know whether this is going to people who have already got a property or not, but whether or not you should rent the home you live in or buy the home you live in. So you know, it's buy it's one to question. use that as an investment and rent where yeah. you live or what's your kind of... Yep. Yeah. so my kind of financial of advisor would say, mate, don't... First, you've got to have a primary price of residence because if you do get an investment, you'll have to pay a tax on the rent. I think it's a 10%. So you'll be paying tax on that. So... It really depends what you want to do and where you want to live. So, for example, I've been in an area where early days it was in Brighton East there, but I actually couldn't afford to purchase a house because the median price range was like two and a half to three and a half million. Mm. And for three, five years ago, I just couldn't afford that. Yeah. So I was renting uh, for a while and owned something else smaller and it's exactly like that. But now I've done, done the swap over in terms of owning in that area because it's my premium principal price uh, residence. Play, principal place of residence a yeah. Friday afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's always, I'm always tired on a Friday Arvo because uh, it's been a hectic Monday to, to Friday. And I, Friday afternoons I usually have off. Um, so, but yeah, pr- uh, principal pr- place of residence. But um, it's a good question. I always w- would recommend if you're a family, have the place. Mm-hmm. But if you're younger, you can, ha- you can rent somewhere because you want to be in that area. Like yeah. so most people say, you know what, I want to actually live in South Yarra, Paran, Turak, yep. Brighton, Albert Park. Yep. I can't afford a place there. Mm-hmm. So I'll keep my, um, in, the, in the burbs, I'll keep my place there, rent that out, and I'll rent another place. Because yeah. quality of life is different for everyone. Yep. Like, I mean, someone like yourself is a, a great networker. You might only own a place and say, and I don't know if this is true in Horsham, but you have a better life here because yep. you meet new people, mm-hmm. you network your business as well, and it's smarter. You yep. know, it might cost you a couple hundred bucks out each way, yep. but what you get in life experience and what you get yeah. in your business. So yep. it really depends it depends on the individual. Yeah, I definitely agree. Even even renting, because I when I moved, I moved here straight after year 12, yep. and in that time period I've, I've been in a few different um, rentals down here. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there was a year, I think it was, where I was – it was only maybe 30 to 40 minutes away from 
yeah. work even. And yeah. obviously, like, with, with my job and the amount of hours and stuff I was doing, it, yeah. it made a significant difference when I moved pretty much five to ten minutes away from work. Like, just quality of life right. in terms of more sleep. Who wants to spend an hour a day in the car? And I, and I feel bad saying that to people. Mm. But I've been that for – and it's very lucky. But I used to be – for the first 15 years of my life, I was driving all over the place, spending two hours a day in the car. And the fact that I'm able to – I'm very blessed to work in the same area – that I live in, you know, yeah. so I go to work, it's four minute drive, yeah. Kid pick up the kids from school and sometimes I don't even leave the suburbs um, and it's the quality of life though, the happiness that I have day to day yeah. has increased exactly like yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. You mentioned the mindfulness stuff before um, about the meditation and whatnot. Outside of that, um, again, we'll, we'll touch on the fitness side soon, but do you have any form of, I guess, routine or habits that you like to do on a daily basis to, I guess, prime yourself mentally and physically um, yep. for the day ahead or whether it's a, a, a debrief at the end of the day or what does that look like for you? Yeah, I'm trying to get better and it's changing each year. But for me, it's um, it's training physically every most days. Mm-hmm. So, mate, I'm 43 now, so it's not getting easier. But I train at least five days a week. It's awesome. Um, which probably for about an hour, hour and a bit most days. Yeah, good. And I just feel like to myself, I'm physically as fit as possible Mm -hmm. and I I can conquer the world. And it's It's a big carryover. Yeah. Across to to, to work and and just energy I reckon I can take it if I'm physically in in best shape or just about, um, which is I get to a Friday and I've trained actually every day. I usually have a Tuesday and Saturday off. And the two reasons, Dan, because Saturday is my biggest day physically and mentally and I don't want to be too exhausted. And choose over sales, meaning it's just a day. What I'm finding in five days a week is just a, is enough to whilst I'm working sixty hours a week. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just feel I have to train every day, and if I don't yep. train, um, I just don't feel mentally right. Mm. So even though sometimes, like for example, today I put my alarm at six, and because I just got back from Bali, it's that first week back. <laughs> yeah. It's Friday. I couldn't get out of bed till seven. Yeah. So by the time I got to the gym, it was seven forty-five. But I said, you know what? This is too important. Mm-hmm. Didn't get out of the gym till nine fifteen. I did forty-five minute bike, but forty-five minutes Good. of weights. Yeah. And by the time I got home into a suit, it was ten. A bit later than I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. But that's the flexibility. So tonight I could after here. So if I wanted to do two hours of work, I could still do that. Yeah. But the training physically every day with with the meditation is is a priority. Game changer. Yeah. yeah. Did you have? whether it was at the start of your um, career in the industry um, or whether it's now, do you have any, I guess, mentors or people that you go to for sources of information, whether it's content online or whether it's in person, you kind of meet up with someone or a business yep. coach or whatever it may be? Yeah, I do. I've got, had a fair few over the years. Um, like So in real estate, there's been some guns like Tom Panos. You've probably heard of him. Mm. Massive in Sydney, and, but really good. He's mentored me a lot. A uh, guy like Chris Helder famous ex-American speaker. Um, so there's been a lot of good real estate coaches. Probably the best thing I've had is when I joined Marshall White five years ago, Marshall White is lucky to have about three or four of the best agents in Victoria, probably top 10 agents in that company. Yeah. So it's probably uh, you know, Marcus Kimonello, James Tosterman, Oliver Bruce, a couple of the guys, and then, then even our owners, John and, and James. Um, they've got, they just have those guys, and Andrew Hain, these guys have mentored us. So sometimes we'll go try to catch up with these guys at least once or twice a year. Yeah. And you know, they're, they're all older, more experienced than me. They're all sort of between 44 and 60. Mm-hmm. And always, you know, always learning, ask the question. I still make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. It's all about learning by my mistakes, though. And, you know, I've got a new um, general manager that's an ex Olympian, Drew Ginn, who's started. Um, at our company, it, awesome foursome. If you if you're over forty, they were the famous rollers. I think they won a couple of, and and even Drew just you know spending um a couple of hours with him. Yep. And just always a student. I always yeah. say to everyone, doesn't matter with you, 23, 43, or sixty three, should always be a student. Yeah. You should always you're always learning. You've got two ears and one mouth for a reason. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Do you um. Uh, it doesn't doesn't really seem like you would have a great deal of time to fit this in, but do you do much? Uh, consuming your content via like reading or audio books and stuff like that not as much as i want to do but and that's been a weakness and a lot of people like um online i'll jump on and listen try to listen to gary v yeah. ryan holiday mm-hmm. um you know i follow like the, the 5 a.m success club jay alden i don't know if you know him he's a really good coach sports coach yeah okay i'll show you him but a lot of the things i've talked about was reading so i now made an effort to start reading again yeah um so each holiday 
I'm reading at least a book and I'm trying to read, but it's just so it's so hard with the work volume yeah, yeah. to do that. Yeah. But um, instead of waking up and jumping on social media, I won't touch social media. So that's a thing I've changed. Wake up in the morning, either meditate or train, mm-hmm. and what probably within an hour of being up, I'll touch social media. And when I go to social media, I make sure it's either on Gary's page, Gary V's page, cool. Ryan Holiday's page, one of the business coaches' pages, yep. where I'm actually getting content, mm. not just scrolling and looking at people's life. Yeah, it's it's incredible, isn't it? Like you think about how many, how so many people start their day with either the, the news. Yep. Social yeah, media, comparing themselves to other people, yeah. or, or you know, just looking at negative news stories and whatnot, Correct. and you and you think to yourself, it's like it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that it's there's a reason why you're having a shit day, or there's a reason why you're in constantly 100%. a bad headspace when this is the stuff you're consuming, particularly 100%. the first thing when you wake up in the morning. Yeah, it's it's the quality, it's the people that you you look at. So even yourself, like I love when I see your pot because it's you're so, super fit and young and super successful. If I if I jump on Facebook, and Instagram, it's about, I, I'll look at really successful people and you know, people where do I want to get role models, mm-hmm. etc. Yeah, that's awesome. Obviously, with the amount uh, that you're doing and trying to have sustain uh, energy levels and and focus and and um, and whatnot throughout the day and throughout the week, nutrition has to play a pretty big role in that and hydration yep. um, and whatnot. How does your kind of nutrition look for, on a day to day basis and and how much of an importance do you place on on it? Mate, it's everything. Um, so one thing I want to start doing is probably fasting one every 14 days. But nutrition for me is so I wake up every morning. I'm a one coffee person a day, double shot in the morning coconut oil. I actually use some mushroom powder. Which one? Um, I use the, what's the Reishi, brand? Uh, R- R- Reishi brand? R-E-I. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Reishi, yeah. Yeah, the, the, so. Um, got to try out a bit of lion's mane. Lines, mate, I've got that as well. Yeah, and yeah. the cordyceps is quite cordyceps good as well. Cordyceps is in there yeah. as well. Um, awesome. They said don't mix them all up, but I just mix them okay. all up. Yeah, chuck it in. Chuck it <laughs> all in. Um, so nutrition is huge. So I'll have – look, people say to me, do you have supplements and are you on stuff? Because you, it's hard work, but I do use amino acids mm-hmm. pre-workout. Yep. Um, because I'm trying to keep size, Once what happens is you get in your 40s, you lose muscle mass. Mm-hmm. I'm naturally okay, but I've been using a slight bit of creatine, which is yep. not healthy. Yep. But it's the only thing that helps me in terms of keep some size. Um, a lot of amino acids and protein. And then when I get so when I get home, I'll have a protein shake with real wholesome nut, whole meal nuts, fibers. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that will, that will last me through to about midday. And then I'll have a green juice, kale, okay. spinach, goji berries. So I've got that every day. Yeah, you know, Monday to Saturday, and I have a green juice about midday, and then I'll probably have a, a really healthy chicken wrap. My lovely wife most days will make me a healthy chicken wrap, organic yeah. chicken, avocado, eating that by at three, four o'clock, and I always end up with a light meal. So most nights I'm eating tuna salads or sardine salads. Okay, um, maybe a steak one night a week, mm-hmm. and I've really, really don't eat any carbs after three, four o'clock. Pretty dialed in, mate. It's good. I oh, know, I oh, know. As you get older. Your metabolism changes. Piece so it all together, got, yeah. You know, and it's for energy levels as well. Yeah, I think with know. the with the creatine as well, in, in particular, I reckon if you're having the five, like around five gram dosage, it's just smaller. a consistent, consistently Correct. instead of trying to load it and come off yeah. it, I think that's 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 what I do anyway. As I just yeah. keep that five gram dosage pretty much daily. Yeah, hundred percent. I just sprinkle. I have a bit of pre workout and, and and sprinkle the creatine. And when I'm at halfway through, the amino acids is great. Yeah, and Trent from God, his company's going to kill me, but he looks after us really well. And mate, healthy protein afterwards with fiber and, and oats and really good foods. What, uh, if there is anything or something that you're conscious of at the moment, um, what is like an area, I guess, of your life or maybe it's just a personal thing, whether it's something you're wanting to learn or, or habit or quality or whatever that at the moment is, I don't know if roadblock's a good word, but something that, you feel like you need to improve, like something that you're consciously trying to improve on. Yeah, my probably my. So, I've been always so too focused on performing. So now it's about becoming a better, better leader in terms of better teacher. Um, things that ultimately maybe straight away don't give you income or don't give you something else, but they'll give you satisfaction. So I'm really now trying to become. A better mentor, give have a bit more time to give back, whether mm-hmm. it's teaching and you know doing as much as I can. And like if someone rings me up and says, "Can I spend half an hour to pick your brain?" Um, you know, from our company, I'll do. I've got you know one of the young guys I'm catching up for lunch with from our Armadale next week. So really trying to become a better manager as well, because I am one of the owners of our office. Yeah. So uh, it's 
always been so focused on performing, listing and, and bringing income into the business, but now becoming you know, a, a happier person to be around because when you're under the pump all the time, sometimes it's hard to crack a smile or sit down and yeah. say, how's your day going? Yeah. So I really try to acknowledge that um, you need to be – a really good mixture of both. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but doing the things that don't necessarily have the direct ROI of, correct. of your actions. Yeah. Correct. So um, you know, but better leader, better mentor, and giving people more time. You know, making sure my team's happy, the people around us are happy. Yeah. Um, self awareness is something I'm working on as well because I'm pretty intense, and most you know, it's I get criticised for it, but when when you have decent success you're pretty you're always in the zone most people are pretty intense so now i'm trying to have more self awareness and say how's the way i'm acting affecting my team mm-hmm. how's the way i'm acting affecting my wife you know that's why i meditate and, and stay calm and that's why a lot of times i'll do everything i can get home put the phone away and, and happy you know i might have a shocking day at work mm-hmm. but i won't bring it home yeah so you know my wife go how's work going everything's good how good is it to be at home with you yeah. and your kids and i'll be happy and i might have had a, had a Bad day. I've lost. Yeah. Like, you know, I had, had a week last week. I lost one or two listings, which I thought I would have had, but I was away. There was one guy who wanted me to tell me his place was worth five mil. I honestly thought it was worth four point four. Thought I was arrogant. Went with someone else. I was spewing, but I didn't bring it home. Yeah. So I really try to work, live, live the work life away from the home life. Yeah, using a bit of perspective on 100%. the things that are important. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. With the family side of things. Um, how, how do you go juggling that in terms of you've, you've mentioned obviously the it's time hard. that you allocate and whatnot, but in terms of communicating with the kids or, and your wife and stuff like that, how, how does that dynamic yeah. go? It's look, it's not perfect. It, we've got a great relationship, communication and honesty. Um, sometimes I'll say to my wife, I'm, I've just had a really hard day. Sorry if I'm not there. So it's just communicating mm-hmm. best friends, um, let, letting them know that you, you're real um, so you know, they see that sort of that, that part, but we have like a so my son's thirteen, daughter's nearly twelve. We have a group SMS family SMS. Yeah. You know, so sometimes I might miss them in the morning. I say, "Love you guys, but have a great day." Yeah. You know, so they've grown up. Bit of communication on text. Um, we uh, we try to have our holidays every year. Sunday day is family day. So people go, "You're crazy. You work six days a week." On a Sunday, I do the running for my son. I used to be assistant coach, but I do the running and sort of a second assistant coach. For my son's on the 13 side. My daughter, I think I'm scheduled on Sunday to be the goal umpire. Yep. <laughs> Last week, I, before I went to Bali, the umpires didn't rock up. They go, who wants to be the umpire? I said, I'll do it. And my daughter's face, she was so happy. Yeah, that's awesome. Pretending not to be. So I was the field umpire for their game. Um, you know, my son's actually starting umpiring this week, so I'll be at his game. Mate, you, you, once you're dead, you're dead, right? So I would say, <laughs> got to live life. Mm. you got to be in the present. You know, there's you got when I get to a hundred. Hopefully, I can live to a hundred, and I'm trying to stay fit too. But you've got so much time to slow down. So yeah, um, I try to spend every Sunday with them. Friday nights, like for example, I won't go out on a Friday night. I might if I've got a really good like I've got a good mate's fortieth tonight. I'll go for an hour or two, and I'll say to him, I need to actually be home because of work. Yeah. Um. So I'll take you out for lunch for your birthday. Yep. So I'll go for the first hour drop of gift, but I really want to spend some time with my son and daughter. And whether it's watching the AFL, what they like, or mm-hmm. watching a movie. That's it's, awesome. It's really just locking those times. Yeah. Like. Just making it a priority. Yeah. 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 And being intentional about it. Yeah. Yeah. With the two two different categories here, but let's say work and then life outside of family. So just uh, yep. separating that. What are the two most rewarding things for you within the job and then without outside of work whether it's you know watching sport or, or yeah. catching up with mates like what are, what are kind of the two things that you get a lot of um, enjoyment out of mate I, with work it's a combination of having happy people and it's not an ego thing but people saying it was great to deal with refer, it's a, such a referral based business mm. so with work it's a combination of having a great reputation and also you get paid pretty well. So when you see that paycheck, you say it was worth it. Yep. Because you do sacrifice a lot of time, stress, blood, sweat, and tears. I mean, when we caught up, uh, again, I mean, I've got to invest in, I love dressing up well, but I wish I could dress up in a T-shirt. I, made Man, it, I felt very underdressed when I walked out and saw you today. But, you know, I've got, this is an investment as well. Yeah. So, you know, I wish I could wear a cap a lot of days, but I've got to look, I've got to try to put my hair product in and yep. wear a nice jacket because that's the service yeah. clients like. So if, if I rocked up wet, um, a little bit unshaven and not hair not done, and the other guy rocks up and all the other 
overdressed, they're probably going to go with the overdressed person. Yeah. This person cares. Cares more. So it's about that investment. So uh, in, in terms of real, going back to your question, the real estate part is the financial reward as well as the enjoyment and making ha- making a difference in people's life, happiness. Mm. And, you know, one out of 100 or two out of 100, I might have a, have a bad, but 98 out of 100, I'll get it right and, and have a really good referral-based business. Uh, in terms of things personally, mate, I'm an easygoing guy. If I can, I went on a holiday to Bali, and I just said to my wife, "All I want to do is, I'd love to train with you and the kids most mornings. So, and I just want to have dinner every night and mm-hmm. get a you know, massage and just sunbathe. Yeah. And I was pretty, whatever you guys want to do, I'm happy. Yeah. And they're the sort of things that, um, and same, just getting getting meals with mates and watching the footy. Yeah. I love the UFC. Same. A big UFC fan. Did you watch the most recent card? Volkanovski was unbelievable. Israel was solid. I was disappointed with the the no contest with Sugar Sean. Yeah, yeah. It was oh, I was unlucky. hoping he'd get, get the W. He looked yeah. like he was on his way. It, yeah, he was. He's probably he's a very good fighter. But I love the UFC. And I, it's hard to promote that. Being in the prestige real estate, <laughs> yeah. they see that as thuggery, but it's mixed martial arts. Yeah. Um, if I could do any job, it would be Bruce Buffer's job yeah. and or Joe Rogan's job. I, I always Amazing. say to my wife, if I ever leave you, it will be the first job <laughs> in the UFC, but I won't yeah. leave you. I'm just working. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, look, that, that I've got a passion for the, the UFC. But, look, I've just got a passion for family and friends, mate, and staying fit and healthy. Yeah. Love that. With the ref- You mentioned how important referrals is in the industry. Yep. Obviously, biggest part of that or one of the biggest parts would have to be networking. Yes, what type of things do you actively do to to expand your network or um, yep. you know take the opportunity to to meet someone new without we, again without the kind of uh, without knowing that it's going to have some form of return on your yeah. time? Yeah, it's a good question. There's a lot of lunches. Um, I don't go out and get, and I think most of my clients appreciate this, but I don't go and get wasted. A yeah. lot of times it'll be Friday lunches or. Um, lunches if i if i go away like i was in queensland last year which was hard on the family but at least saw five or six clients there and took them out for dinner and lunches but i might do one or two events a year mm-hmm. so we have a, a charity bought marshall white which i'll buy a table cost us about three and a half grand mm-hmm. for 350 a head but i'll take maybe six really good clients and their wives or cool. vice versa so i'll do that once a year um once every two years i'll try to do a networking day so i'll yep. get some um, you know guys like nick del santo anthony kudafetis jack rewalt and do a bit of an afl luncheon mm-hmm. and generally um get 40 or 50 people and that might cost us uh, five ten grand earlier this year i got a marquee at the polo uh, oh yeah the Saint yep. Kilda polo. yep and i took about well I took my team because i wanted my team to have we didn't have a christmas party last year so i said this we're gonna have an epic day at the polo yeah. but i've also got 20 clients coming so that was like it was a big investment it costed like about eight grand but these mm. clients are clients for life they, were, they said it was a day they'll never forget yeah so you got it it's just it's just experiences that it up. yeah experiences networking trust you know i always say we, we eat every day so you might as well <laughs> i always have dinners and lunches with my clients yeah because we're gonna they're gonna spend an hour eating anyway yeah and i always take them out for a, for a meal at least once or twice a year that's awesome, mate. Before before we uh, want to be respectful of your time, uh, clear, quite bloody clearly you're a busy man. Before we wrap up, tell us a little bit about the and correct me if I'm wrong with this one. Is it Love Me Love You Foundation? It is. It's uh, the Love Me Love You Foundation. It's a mental health foundation, suicide prevention. Um, that Lance Pachoni, Luke Livingston, Lance is the current CEO. Uh, we founded that uh, twelve years ago, thirteen years ago, um, and. It's been an absolute joy to be part of. So I've been on the board um, for a 12 out of 30 years. I stepped off late last year and we have some huge corporates now running it. So really now just career pathways and um, suicide prevention, mental health, really focusing on on youth, 14 and yep. 28, and you know, going out to schools and country communities, mm-hmm. um, s- sporting clubs, and just talking about being open, mental health, prevention, seeing signs and... It was just something that I've been involved in. You know, I had a couple of friends. I had one friend commit suicide when I was 23. I never forget it. And Lance Piccioni, who had some mental health issues, has been phenomenal. Um, reached out to Luke Luke and I, and we supported him and wanted to start this foundation. And we, we supported him with him. And he's really been the, the backbone. So the Love Me, Love You Foundation, we do a charity walk every year. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Dylan Ruse has been involved with it. And yep. a lot of people that you know. <coughs> yep. and, and it's a great foundation. 
unreal, mate. It's, it's great a, stuff. It's awesome. It's a I'll, privilege to be involved with it. I'll have the the links to not only your stuff, but I'll have the link to the foundation. We've got a website, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah, yeah I'll have yeah. all that in the show notes for anyone who wants to learn a little bit more about that. But, um, Matt, thanks so much for coming in, mate. Right, it's been an absolute me. pleasure. It's good to see you in person. Yeah, we could sit here and chat all day, I'm sure. But oh, no. you better go and sell, sell okay. some home, mates. <laughs> Mate, thank you Makes for having me and um, reach out if I can do anything anytime. And if any of your, your clients or guests need anything, mate, I'm always here. 100%. Everyone who has tuned into this episode, whether it's uh, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, thank you firstly. Uh, make sure you check out some of the past episodes if you haven't already. Um, we hope you've enjoyed today's conversation. I'm sure you have. Uh, if you have, I'd love for you to either send this link to a friend or someone you think could benefit from it or take a screenshot and share it on your social media. Um, tag us both. We'd love to hear your feedback. And uh, thanks again. Hope you have a good day. So.